So just the other day, we had the largest pro-Palestine protest in the history of the United States. There was, depending on which numbers you believe, it's anywhere from 90,000 on the low end to 300,000 on the top end. People marched through Washington, D.C. Um, now, let me show you. We already I showed you this in the previous segment, but I want to show you again here. Look at all these people, man. This is astonishing. This is a lot of people. And this is something that Washington will definitely take notice of. Don't think that the Biden administration doesn't see this and won't somewhat adjust course as a result of this. You can only deny movements, you know, that are, are below a certain threshold. Once you get to over 80% of the public expressing a certain sentiment and you get hundreds of thousands of bodies in the street, it's hard to just stay the course and just continue to agree with whatever the hell Netanyahu wants to do. So, look, of course, uh, the, the main reason for all these people being out there is very simple. For the love of God, Israel, stop the bombing. They are leveling Gaza day in and day out. They're bombing every kind of civilian infrastructure you can imagine. They they announced a medieval siege weeks ago to cut off food, fuel, water, and all this stuff to regular people. And so this is an expression of solidarity to say, for the love of God, stop massacring innocent people. That's the main thrust of this protest. Well, guess what? Fox News wasn't having it, and many uh, far-right... Israeli government defenders are not having it. Look at this, guys. This is in uh, Fox News on their website. Anti-Semitic protests... Anti-Semitic protests across U.S. bear striking resemblance to other social justice movements, according to experts. Social justice movement that gave birth to BLM and other groups targeting Jews and Israel supporters. Okay, so you see the trick they're trying to do here. They're trying to say, hey, conservatives, Republicans, you didn't like Black Lives Matter. You didn't like the riots after George Floyd's killing. So what if I told you that that and this are actually the exact same thing? Now, by the way, why would you have to write an article like this? Well, there was a poll that came out not too long ago. Even 55% of Republican voters want a ceasefire in Gaza. So they want Israel to stop bombing innocent civilians. 55% of Republican voters. So this is Fox News, Kyle Morris in particular, trying to control the narrative. The anti-Israel movement put on full display across dozens of college campuses in major American cities in recent weeks amid Israel's war with Hamas bears a striking, re striking resemblance to certain movements by social justice activists in the United States, experts suggest. Experts suggest. <laughs> Since the October 7th attacks on Israel by Hamas terrorists, there has been an outpouring of protests across the world, not condemning the terror group, but rather the Jewish state, which is reeling from the murder, murders of more than 1,400 Israelis. That is incredibly dishonest. That is so dishonest. Because, guys, we're now, what, three weeks removed or more from that horrific terror attack by Hamas? What has happened since then? Everybody knows you can't hide the reality. What's happened since then is indiscriminate bombing. There's over 9,000 Gazans dead, including over 4,000 children and nearly 3,000 women. You can't, like, you can't just pretend. Well, actually, we didn't bomb any schools or UN shelters or hospitals or ambulances or apartment buildings or mosques. We didn't actually do that. The reason these people are protesting is in support of Hamas. No, the reason they're protesting is so many civilians are being slaughtered on a daily basis and you are lying by pretending the main thrust of the protest is to say yay Hamas for their terror attack on innocent civilians. That's just a lie. You're just lying. The reasoning behind several of these protests, which have been complex and unpredictable in many cases, boils down to the teachings and activism of left-wing academics who have long supported certain racial divides and expect others to do the same according to observers who've watched the issue unfold and offered their perspectives to Fox News Digital. Quote, The left-wing academics who have been cheering on violent decolonization against Jews have been pushing the same hideous rhetoric against whiteness for years. Same ideology, same hatred, same bloodlust. Said Christopher F. Rufo, a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and contributing editor of City Journal. This guy is like the, the godfather of the anti-woke movement. That's who Christopher Rufo is. Rufo noted that several on the academic left treat the Hamas fighters as a noble savage who symbolizes revolt against the West and through whom the academic can experience the thrill of violence. 
God, look. It's not fun to engage in political debates and just totally straw man the opposing side. Like, give a good faith steel man explanation for people who disagree with you and then react to that. But they can't do that in this instance because the steel man is too overwhelming to overcome. The steel man is, they just want Israel to stop bombing civilians in Gaza. That's it. They just want to cease fire. That's it. And there's no reasonable response to that. So instead, they just straw man all these people. Oh, you all love Hamas. And, and it's the thrill of violence that gets you going. The fighter is seen as the physical embodiment of the jargon. Decolonization, resistance, power, he added. Time to connect the dots and fight it together. Similarly, Lisa Daftari, editor-in-chief of the Foreign Desk, said she believes the rise in anti-Semitism across the country represents the cross-sectionality of social justice movements and other groups that place particular focus on support for left-wing ideas. A significant contributor to the rise of anti-Semitism, especially among those under 25 and on college campuses, is the cross-sectionality of social justice movements and organizations that are telling young people, if you care about various human rights, such as gay rights, trans rights, race issues, then you need to demonize Israel, she said. It is now on the social justice checklist to condemn Israel. God, man. Look, I think this does a real disservice to anti-Semitism to pretend like everybody who's pro-Palestinian human rights is anti-Semitic. Because then you set up a boy who cried wolf type scenario, right? There's real anti-Semitism in the world, and it is grotesque. And when you pretend like all pro-Palestine -Pal people are anti-Semitic, you're doing a disservice to real cases of anti-Semitism. Similarly, we are seeing Israel portrayed as a country of white, privileged people, the offspring of Europeans who immigrated there. All right, for the love of God. Founding Zionists described Israel as a settler colonial project. That's just what it is. You might not like that, or maybe you do like it. <laughs> But that is what it is. You can't just pretend like it's not that. We know what it is. Similarly, we are seeing Israel portrayed as a country of white, privileged people, the offspring of Europeans who immigrated there. This is absolutely false, she added. Israel is made up of a diverse patchwork of people from all over the world, including those who have been there long before the official founding of the state in 1948. There are black, brown, and white people in Israel coming from Africa, the Middle East, South America, and all over. Okay, but the issue is not... See, they're trying to make it about race. It's not about race. The issue is about Zionism. Founding a country based on ethnic identity or a religious identity or a mix thereof. Everybody's against it when it comes to Islam, as you should be. I'm against an Islamic caliphate, an Islamic theocracy. But if you say you're against a Jewish state and a Jewish theocracy, they say that's anti-Semitic. Okay, well, is it Islamophobic to criticize the government of Saudi Arabia? No. So it shouldn't be anti-Semitic to criticize the Zionist government of Israel. That's obvious. But they try to... Uh, this, look, it's the, it's the saddest trick in the world. This is exactly the, the thing that's so ironic. Is this is the exact trick that people on the far left use, that people on the right say they hate. Just demonize and dismiss anybody who disagrees with you as racist, bigoted, xenophobic, etc. That's what the right is doing to the left here. You're all just anti-Semitic. You're all just bigoted. You're all just xenophobic. If you partook in that protest, you're all just xenophobic. It's just an anti-Semitic protest. So in other words, just say, uh, you have no legitimate grievances or concerns. I'm not going to be nuanced about your take. I'm just going to say, I dismiss it because you're a bigot. You're just an anti-Semite. That is the exact same mentality of people on the far left who criticize people on the right and are too quick to use racist or bigoted against right-wing people. Now you're just doing it to the left. You're just anti-Semites. You're just bigoted. Look, let's get down to the reality of the situation. It's very simple. Are there some people at these pro-Palestine protests? If you put enough microphones in front of enough people's faces, are you going to find some people at these protests who might be genuinely anti-Semitic? I'm sure. Absolutely, there's going to be some percentage that are like that. There are going to be some percentage that have this weird, twisted logic grotesquely supporting Hamas. I have no doubt that that exists. But the overwhelming majority of people at this protest and at these kinds of protests are simply saying, for the love of God, ceasefire, stop the bombing. For the love of God, end the occupation in Gaza. For the love of God, end apartheid in the West Bank. That's what these people are saying. The steel man version of the overwhelming majority of people at this protest, cease fire, stop the bombing, stop killing innocent women, children, and men. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. That's the main thrust of most of them. You couldn't get this many people out in the street unless there was, it was an urgent, pressing need where you see the images day in and day out, the videos day in and day out, of children being pulled out of rubble and people crying because they lost family members and journalists being blown to smithereens and doctors and their families being blown to smithereens. You couldn't get this many people out on the street unless there was something urgent happening. And they don't care. They dismiss it all. And they dismiss it all under the guise of, you're just anti-Semites. You're all just anti-Semites. Astonishingly gross. What's so amazing to me 
I saw no shortage of people, liberals and leftists, who came out after the October 7th Hamas terror attack and said, this is disgusting, I condemn it. Targeting innocent civilians in any way, shape, or form, no matter who you are, is evil and wrong. We're against it. We're against I saw so many people on the left and liberals saying that. But it looks like in the Fox News crowd and the, and the right-wingers, you cannot get many of them to state the obvious about the IDF and the Netanyahu government. That they are war criminals, they are targeting civilians on purpose, and they are a problem. And you condemn them. They refuse to condemn them. Many liberals and leftists do condemn Hamas. It looks like pe the people who write these kinds of articles do not condemn the IDF, do not condemn Netanyahu, do not condemn the illegal settlers in the West Bank, do not condemn the occupation, do not condemn the apartheid. In fact, they argue there is no occupation. There is no apartheid. You're just wrong. This is what they argue. Incredibly dishonest. And you should all see directly through their cheap trick. So you're just anti-Semites. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. 300,000 anti-Semites came out to express their anti-Semitism. It's that simple. You guys nailed it. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.